Hi, my name is Nadej Sezana and I go by Nan and I'm the Cravings Coach. And today I wanted to talk to you, to talk with you about the fear of getting fat, which is a fear that many of us can relate to, especially in our society where standards, beauty standards can be unrealistic. So together, what I want to do today is to dig deep into the roots of fear and understand its impact on our mental well-being and also very importantly, uncover some very practical tools to actually break free from this grip. So grab a cup of tea or coffee, whatever you like, get cozy and let's watch. So here are three benefits that I've um, noticed about the freedom from the fear of getting fat. First, we are going to talk about emotional resilience. That is to say, the fact that we can cope with adversity, we can adapt to new situations, develop problem solving skills when we have this thought that ooh, we could get fat. And it's really about future, um, navigating future challenge because if we can again navigate the fear of getting fat, we can then use this strategy, what we've put in place into different areas. So it's going to be a very useful skill, this emotional resilience. That's the first benefit that I see of breaking free from the fear of getting fat. The second benefit that I see is the growth and learning. I'm always in for growing and learning something. And when we embrace the fear, even though it may not sound very hmm, nice, but when we do, when we embrace the fear, when we step into what we fear, then we also open ourselves up to learning, to growth, to personal transformation, right? That can be amazing. So overcoming fear can lead to increased confidence and self-belief, right? The third benefit that I see of about breaking free from the fear of getting fat is that then we'll be more empathetic and more compassionate. We know that fear is an universal emotion. It connects us to other people. So when we acknowledge and understand our own fears, chances are we're also going to be able to understand and acknowledge others' fears. And it's going to enhance relationships, promote a sense of unity with other people. So everything's wonderful. <laughs> now, what do we do? So I want to start with an example. So when I was still binge eating, stress eating on a very regular basis, I used to remember, oh, I overate today, I overate yesterday, I overate two days ago, I overate on a daily basis. And when I remember that overeating was really part of my daily life, I was having this thought, which was, I don't want to get fat. And when I was thinking, I don't want to get fat, I could feel a real fear, if not panic, inside of me. When I was feeling that fear, then what I would do to start with was worry. In my mind, I would spin thoughts about what it would be like if I was fat, and I would go to the worst case scenario, obviously, all the diseases that I could see that were associated with fat. Um, and I would want to run away from this. I was so afraid. What do, did I do when I was afraid of feeling fear? I was simply going to eat, overeat, because it was my way of numbing this emotion of fear that I really didn't want to feel. And then I was justifying to myself, well, it's making me feel better. It's okay for a split second to have this piece of chocolate, this piece of cake, whatever. So I was justifying in my head. And when I was behaving this way, worrying, going to the worst case scenario, overreaching and justifying that behavior, what I was really creating in my life by doing so was that really I was guaranteeing me getting fatter. And it's really ironic, isn't it, that I didn't want to get fat. I was afraid of getting fat, but my behavior coming from the fear of getting fat was leading me straight to what I didn't want. And this is what we do out of fear, which we think is a necessary um, emotion to prevent us from doing something. Well, I was actually creating what I didn't want. Right. This is so fascinating to me. And it had nothing to do with the fact that I had overeaten on this particular day. Right. I had eaten 
a certain amount of foods, right? The, the food that I had eaten couldn't make me feel scared. But it's the way I was interpreting the fact that I had eaten this amount of food, that's what was creating the fear. So when I was telling myself, this eating this amount of food is actually creating a fatter body, this was why I was afraid, right? And of course, you could object that, well, of course, it makes sense. You eat more calories, of course, you're getting fat. This makes, it makes perfect sense. Okay, except that I was amplifying this because I was afraid. I was not just stopping at, oh, I ate this amount of calories, if we want to count in calories. So, of course, I'm going to create this result, my body getting fatter. I was intensifying this result because of the fear. The fear made me eat even more than I had started with. So I was amplifying, increasing the, the, the risk of getting fatter because of the fear. So once we've noticed that our thoughts are actually amplifying the problem, making it worse than it already could be, what do we do? So once we've noticed, it's always the first step, we can question. We can question the thought, the feeling, the actions that are leading us to this result that we actually don't want at all. That's what we're going to do in a minute. And the third phase, the third step is to actually decide to make a different decision than when we're in this model where we are overeating out of fear and actually creating what we really don't want. So the second step is to actually question. So today is going to be a bit different than the previous episodes that you may have watched in the sense that usually I have you question the thought. Today, the, the thought was, I don't want to get fat. But we are going to actually question the feeling of fear today, which is a bit different, but you're going to see that it's going to be extremely useful to you. You're going to see that, yes, an emotion can also be explored with the same curiosity as we do when we explore a thought, right? It's a different process. It's a different way to do it, but it's also equally valuable. You're going to see why. The first question you could ask yourself is, where is this fear in my body, right? What I'm inviting you to do is what we call a body scan. So it's really, really going from head to toe or vice versa. It doesn't really matter, but really exploring your body and asking yourself for each step of the way, where am I feeling this fear? Am I feeling the fear in my head? And if so, where? Is it in my jaws? Are they clenched? Is it in my throat? Is there something here happening in my throat in particular? Is it in my shoulder muscles? Is it really uh, in my hands? Just picture yourself as if you were actually in a scan and go slowly, bit by bit, through your body and notice what's happening there. Are you noticing something tight in particular, that you would label as fear, right? That's the first thing I'd like you to question to get more familiar with this emotion of fear, which happens within your body, right? The fear you feel is in your body. So that's why we're exploring the body part today instead of what's happening in our head, even though they're linked, right? An emotion, you feel an emotion in your body because you're having a thought in your head. That's where it's coming from, right? So where is it in your body? That's the first question. The second question is, what's it like? Once you've located the fear in your body, try to describe it to yourself, right? What's it like? So um, you may have found different areas where you notice the fear. For instance, it could be, as we said, in the jaw, you're noticing your jaws are clenched, but you're also not noticing something in your throat. So I want you just for the sake of simplicity to focus on one area. It could be your jaws, it could be your throat, wherever it is, in your belly, wherever. It doesn't really matter so long as it's the, the area where you feel it the more intensely, right? And then the second question is, what's it like? And I'd like you to describe it to yourself, to describe this fear, this vibration that you can feel in your body as much as possible. And for that, we're going to imagine that there's a little Martian coming to planet Earth and is meeting you, they're meeting you, 
<laughs> and they want to know about this fear that you're experiencing. They're very curious. They're very kind. They're very compassionate. They want to understand really what's happening to you. So you're going to describe it to them using all the adjectives that come to your mind. Remember, when we started to describe objects when we were in kindergarten, we used to use uh, adjectives like uh, cold, hot, square, round, uh, blue, white. This is the type of adjectives that you can use to describe this fear within your body. Keep it simple, keep it very tangible. If it was an object that you could hold in the palm of your hand, how would you describe it, right? Try to make it very visual for yourself. That's the second question, what's it like? And the third question that you could ex explore with me is what do you think about being scared? We know that you're having a, an emotion in your body, it's called fear, and you know where it is in your body. You know now more or less, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be specific, precise, there's no expectation there, there's no right or wrong way to describe your fear, it's yours, and you get to experience it the way you are, no judgment there. But the third question could be, what do you think about being scared? And really my question is about, is it a problem? Is it a problem for you to experience fear today, right now, because you're thinking, I don't want to get fat? And if so, and then again, there's no judgment. You get to feel whatever you're feeling. You get to think whatever you're thinking. It's happening and that's okay. But then you can ask yourself just to get to know yourself better. If it is a problem, why is it a problem, right? So those are the three questions you might want to explore for yourself to get to know this fear a little bit better. And as always, step three is to decide. So we know that the, the, the thought creating the fear could be, it was in my case, I don't want to get fat. So here are three suggestions, three different thoughts that you could get to choose if you want to, or adapt and adopt, whatever you like, so that you can shift that fear a little bit if that's what you want. So the first thought that I'm inviting you to consider is my feeling of fear is real, but it's not reality. I really love that uh, sentence. It brings me a lot of peace because it acknowledges the presence of the fear. It is really my experience. So it acknowledges that there's no gaslighting here. No, I'm really experiencing fear, but it also differentiates. It also distinguishes my experience from what's happening in the world, right? I don't want to get fat. Suggest that there's only one road, there's only one way to go, which is me getting fat. But this may not be reality, right? So my feeling of fear is real, but it's not reality, brings back this distinction of, yes, my feeling of fear is in indeed inside my body, but it doesn't mean that the future is as bleak as my mind wants me to believe. That's the first thought you could choose to adopt for yourself. The second one is, I'm afraid of getting fat, which doesn't mean I will get fat. So it's the same idea again that, yes, I'm afraid of something, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be true eventually. Right? It's this distinction. I'm afraid of getting fat, which doesn't mean I will get fat. Right? And the third and the third sentence is, I can learn how to be in control of my body, my eating patterns, my emotions, my thinking. Very interesting. I can learn. We are learning machines as human beings. We have this capacity to learn. We can learn so many things. It's incredible. Look around you. Look at all the people who know to do things that other people don't know, right? So we have this ability. Nobody was born knowing what they do know now, right? So we have this ability to dedicate ourselves to learning something. It's powerful. So why not use it to actually solve an issue for us? If you'd like me to help you learn how to be more in control of your body, of your eating patterns, of your emotions and of your thinking, well, I can help. 
this is actually what I do all day, five days a week with my coaching clients. That's exactly what my three month one to one online coaching program is all about. It's called the Stress Eating Solution. And if that's what you want, don't hesitate and contact me to book your free one hour stress eating strategy call. This is what I call my consults which is free of charge. And this is what we do. During this free one hour stress eating strategy call, we determine first what would be possible for you when you stop stress eating. And secondly, which ways you want to go through to stop stress eating, right? If you're interested in those two options, well, don't hesitate and contact me at nscoaching at outlook.fr. And I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.